okay so we were discussing the limit of functions and the way we have defined is a we say the limit of this function fx when x tends to c is say l where x is not equal to say c need not be equal to c the meaning of this is that for every a given f sin r greater than 0 uh, for a given f sin r greater than 0 there exists a delta which will depend on f sin r such that if x belongs to the set a a is any set f is a mapping uh, f is a mapping from a to a to r okay so x belongs to a but x is not equal to c x and x uh, and x satisfy this condition x minus c is less than delta so for a given f sin r greater than uh, there exist a uh, delta depend on f sin r such that for all x which lies between this interval then the value of f x minus l will remain less than f sin r so this is the way we have defined this now if we look this uh, definition then it can be easily converted in the form of the neighborhoods because what is this the neighborhood of this c or delta neighborhood of c delta neighborhood of c which is nothing but what is the set of those point x such that mod x minus c is less than delta okay now in this if i remove the del c if i remove c then we say the point x is not equal to c so 0 is less than mod x minus c less than delta means means x belongs to v delta c but x is not equal to c so it lies in the delta neighborhood of c and the f x minus l similarly f x minus l is less than f sin r means that l uh, f x belongs to the f sin r neighborhood of l because the meaning of this is that f x lies between l plus f sin r and l minus f sin r so f x lies between this it means that if we have this function say this is our function f x and here is the point c the value this is l so what he says is if the limit of the function f x when x tends to c be mean for a given f sin l greater than 0 it means if i consider a neighborhood neighborhood b f sin l l that f sin l neighborhood of l then corresponding to this neighborhood we can find a delta neighborhood of c c minus delta c plus delta where c may not be included in it then what this limit says is for any arbitrary point x which lies between this interval and different from c the corresponding image f x f x will always fall within this net ok then we say limit of the function f x exist ok if it is not then obviously this will not uh, the limit of the function f x when x tends to a will not exist it means that for o there uh, there will exist some f sin r neighborhood of a such that for any x we choose there or there will be an x where the limit of the value of the function will lie outside of this range if it does not exist so so what we can uh, that we can also write the equivalent definition of the limit in terms of the we can also express limit concept in terms of the neighborhood okay so this we can write in the form of the theorem the theorem is let f is a mapping from a to r and let c 
and let us see be a crystal point of A. Then the following statements statements are equivalent. The first statement is limit of the function f x when x tends to c is say l and second statement says given any epsilon neighborhood neighborhood of l neighborhood of l which we denoted by that is v epsilon l v l there exist a delta neighborhood neighborhood denoted by v delta c delta neighborhood of c such that such that if x is not equal to c is any point in the common portion of V delta C intersection A in a part of this, then F x belongs to epsilon neighborhood of L and that what I explained in this figure is that uh, for any epsilon greater than 0 of uh, uh, or in FC, any epsilon neighborhood of L, correspondingly we can find out the delta neighborhood of C such that if x which is different from C lies in this interval, then the image will fall here. That is the meaning. So, both are equivalent definition. Okay. Let us take few example using the epsilon delta definition. Suppose I want it to show that prove it the limit of the function x square as x tends to c is c square is c square we using epsilon delta definition ok. So, what is our function? So, here the function f x is x square l is c square ok. So, what we want is for epsilon we will choose first. So, let epsilon be given so, given any epsilon greater than 0, then identify the delta, we have to identify delta, so that this condition holds. It means we want this difference f x minus l should lie with f x should lie in this neighborhood. So, what is the f x minus l? So, f x minus l, l means c l that is equal to x square minus c square, basically this is x plus c into x minus c this will be the ok. Now, <coughs> when we take x sufficiently close to c then the limit of this must be c is called that one is. So, how, how close c is means any f uh, number which is less than 1 we can choose. So, suppose I take let us take mod x minus c less than 1 first why because this x in this case x is uh, lying or close to c which is less ok. So, if I take this one then the bond for this x plus 1 then we get from here is or mod x can be less written as this because mod x minus 1 is less than 1. So, it is greater than equal to mod x minus mod c and then mod x will be less than is mod c plus 1. Therefore, therefore mod x plus c the value of this will be less than equal to mod x plus mod c, but mod x is less than mod c. So, it is mod c plus 1 this we get it from here just this by manipulation we are doing so, so that we can get the bond for it. Now, what we are interested is we are interested we are interested to get this f x minus l which is the same as x square minus c square 
which is the same as x plus c x minus c to be less than f sin r. We are interested in this. Now, x plus c bond is already less than 2a. So, basically this mod x plus c mod x minus c. When mod x minus c is less than 1, then the bond for mod x is obtained from here. So, we can get this is less than basically 2 times mod c plus 1 this is less than mod 2 times mod uh, c plus 1 into mod x minus c. Okay. Now, this entire thing we want it to be less than f sin r this we want it. So, if I choose mod x minus c to be less than f sin r over 2 times mod c plus 1 and then use this bond here then what we get is this element less than f sin r it means this will imply that mod of x square minus c square will remain less than f sin r. Is it right? So, that is f x minus l is less than f sin r, but what should be the delta? So, it means that if we picked up from here then from here then choose delta to be the uh, value which is infimum of infimum of 1 and f sin r over 2 mod c plus 1 because you are getting the two bond for delta one is x minus c is less than delta delta is one here also you are saying x minus c is to this so if i choose the delta which is minimum of these two then for this particular delta this result will also hold this result will also hold that is for a given f sin r we can identify this delta that if any x belongs to this um, a mod x minus f sin r less than delta then this will continue whenever mod x minus c is less than delta and of course greater than 0 because it is not. So, what they show this shows the limit of the function x square when x tends to c is c square that is the answer for it. Okay? So, our main idea is when you when it is asked to prove or establish the limit by using the f sin l delta definition what we consider we start with a given f sin l and then with the help of f sin l we will identify delta which depends on f sin l. So, the huge idea is that find out f x minus l try to get the bond for this in terms of f mod x minus c less than some number. So, this bond can be obtained as this. So, delta we can identify. Once you identify delta, obviously it depends on f sin r. So, corresponding to this f sin r, if I choose this delta, it means if I take this neighborhood x minus c less than delta. So, obviously this delta is also less than 1 as well as delta is less than this number. So, we can take the bond, we can definitely find out the bond for this and one can say this limit, this difference is less than f sin r. Hence, the proof is. So, this is the way to compute the to uh, show the limit in by using the f sin l delta definition. Let us take one more example we are we are also using some trick to get suppose I asked to find to show limit of this uh, say x cube uh, okay, x cube minus 4 divide by x square plus 1 when x tends to 2 is 4 by 5. Suppose we are interested using to show this using f sin l delta definition. Okay. Suppose I do not say using delta f because this is 2. So, you can substitute x equal to 2 and 1 can get the value of this each leaf. But if it is asked to you apply the f sin l delta definition, then you have to start with a given f sin l greater than 0 and then suitably identify the delta. That is the thing. Okay. So, what is our this is our function f x here f x is x cube minus 4 over x square plus 1 and l is 4 y 5. So, let for given f sin l greater than 0, let us consider first the difference of f x minus l. This f x minus l is x cube minus 4 
x square plus 1 minus 4 by 5 and if we uh, find that uh, solve it then the value will come out to be 5 x cube 5 x cube uh, minus 4 x square minus 4 x square minus 24 divide by 5 x square plus 1 this mod. Now, here the numerator is one unit higher than the denominator. So, what we do first we I, uh, separate out the factors. Now, if we look the denom numerator x equal to 2 satisfied f x is 2 means 80 minus 16 minus 24. So, uh, 8 sorry 40 minus 16 minus it satisfies it means x equal to 2 will be a factor of this equation equal to 0. So, we can separate out the x minus 2 factor from the numerator. So, if I separate out the sep things will come out to be mod of f x minus l this is nothing but mod 5 x square plus 6 x plus 12 divide by 5 x square plus 1 into mod of x minus 2. Up to here there is no problem. Now, we wanted to establish the limit of this is uh, in fact f x minus l must go to 0 when x is sufficient tending to 2 this is our problem. So, it means x minus 2 should be as small as we please and x may not be equal to 2 also. So, let us find the bond for this first bound for this requires the value of x upper and lower bound for x. So, how to get the upper and lower? So, let us take x minus 2 is suppose less than 1. Let us take this one restriction. So, if we restrict this one then what will be the x? x will lie between 3 and uh, because x minus 2 is less than 1. So, x is less than 2 or 2 minus x. So, again it is. So, it lies between x lies between 1 and 2 1 and 3. So, this will be the bound for this is an x minus 2 lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So, minus 1 plus 2 will give this one and we get this. Okay. So, this is the bound for this. Okay. Is it clear? We got 2 minus x less than 1. So, 2 plus 1. Okay. So, that will be greater. So, this one it means x is lying between this. So, what will be the upper bound for this 5 x square plus 6 x plus 12. This will be less than x is 3 boundary. So, it is 5 into 9 is plus 6 into 3 plus 12. That is the upper value for this upper bound for this and that upper bound uh, we can identify that is equal to what 75 and what is the 5 x square plus 1 because in the denominator. So, write down the lower bound of this. So, it is greater than 5 into 1 plus 1 that is 10. It means this mod of f x minus l can be made less than 75 by 10 mod x minus 2 that is equal to what is nothing but the 15 by 2 mod x minus 2. So, first bond we have written like this that is delta 1 you can say second bond we will start from here because this entire thing we want it to be less than epsilon. So, if I choose mod x minus 2 is less than say f sin l 2 y 15 less than this. So, as soon as you write this thing then all quantity will remain less than f sin l. So, now picked up the delta as the infimum of 1 and this number. Then with this delta. So, if we take this delta as this then this condition is satisfied as well this condition is satisfied. Therefore, mod of f x minus l that is equal to what uh, mod of x cube uh, the problem was x cube minus 4 divided by x square plus 1 minus 4 by 5. This thing can will be less than f sin l provided the x minus 2 is less than delta and greater than 0 because x may not be 2, but here of course, it no problem we can also take 2 there is no problem here. Okay. So, we can choose them. Therefore, the limit of this x cube minus 4 over x square plus 1 as x tends to 2 
is 4 by 5 and that is proved. So, this way we can prove it the uh, that is uh, our um, limit problems. So, this is the fourth ok. Now, there is another way of defining the limit that is the sequential definition of the limit, sequential criteria, sequential criteria for limits of functions, limit of functions. Sequence. What is the sequence? The, this is in the form of theorem. The theorem says let f <coughs> mapping from A to R and let C and let C be a cluster point. cluster point of A, then the following are equivalent. The first is limit of f f x when x tends to say c is L. Second is the for every sequence for every sequence x n in A that converges to x converges to C sorry such that such that x n is not equal to C for all n belongs to capital N natural number, then the sequence, then the sequence f of x n, this sequence converges to L, converges to L. So, both are equivalent means the limit of f x when x tends to a c is L means for any given epsilon greater than 0 such that f x minus is less than epsilon r whenever mod x minus c less than l and x is different from c. This is equivalent to say there will be a sequence in a which goes to c and then the corresponding image f x n will go to l that is proof. So, first, first we will show first implies 2 given limit exist limit of f x when x tends to c is l. So, by definition when the limit exists, so by definition huh, what is the definition is that for a given epsilon r greater than 0 by definition for given epsilon r greater than 0 there exists a delta which depends of epsilon r positive value such that such that for all x such that if x belongs to a x is not equal to c and satisfy this condition 0 less than mod x minus c less than delta then f x satisfies the condition mod f x f x minus l is less than epsilon l okay, this one this is given. Now, further we wanted to show 1 implies 2. So, 1 is given that we get this much information. Now, let us say the 2. From 2 what is known is we know the sequence x n that converges to c. So, let us uh, given further from 2. So, tells sequence x n in a converges every sequence for every sequence in A that converges to C for every sequence x n in A that converges to C such that x n is not equal to C. 
So, when x n converges to c, it means for again for a given say a small number say I take the delta for a given delta we can identify a capital N m such that when m is greater than equal to cap capital K or capital M then difference of x n minus c will remain less than f standard. So, by definition so for given so for given delta greater than 0 there exist a k depending on delta such that if n is greater than k n is greater than k which depends on delta then mod of x n minus c will remain less than delta is it not that by definition when x n converges to c this is by definition two. But for this particular x n the result of the previous say this uh, f x tends to alpha limit says this condition when all such x which satisfy this condition the mode of f x minus l less than f sin r. So, this x x n will also satisfy this condition therefore, from the previous mode of f x n minus c will also remain less than say f x n minus this is less than l f sin r is it not for such x x n this will satisfy this condition. Okay. And this is true for what for all n greater than capital K. So, it means the limit of f x n this is L sorry limit of f x n is nothing but L. So, this shows the sequence f x n converges to L that is all. Second converse uh, part to show so this implies so uh, hence one implies two to show two implies one. This be proved by contradiction. Suppose two is true holds, but one is not true. Suppose one does not hold. It means that is the limit of this function f x when x tends to l x tends to c does not exist does not exist or does not go to l is not l. Suppose, this limit is not equal to l okay? uh, does not exist or is not l. Okay? We can say like this. So, if it is not L or different from L, it means what do you mean by that? It means that if 1 is not true, then there exist. So, so there exist, there exist f sin L not neighborhood of uh, L that is V L f sin L not such that no matter what delta neighborhood of delta neighborhood of f c v may uh, be pick up there at least one number v may get one number say x depends on say delta in the set a intersection v delta c with x delta is not equal to c such that f of x delta does not belongs to the neighborhood uh, uh, f sin l not neighborhood of l that is the meaning of this is uh, when the limit of this does not exist, if I go through again, uh, let us say the definition of the limit where we made a criteria, uh, you remember this one, first one. When we say the limit of this exists is equivalent to this, it means for a given f sin l, that is when we take the f sin l neighborhood of l, corresponding to we can find a delta neighborhood such that image of any point inside is. 
and it, let us think the converse. Suppose limit is not equal to L, does not exist, or is not L. It means if we picked up the sum epsilon, or there will be at least some epsilon or not, neighborhood of L will definitely exist such that whatever the delta neighborhood we choose, whatever the, there will definitely be one point whose image will not fall inside it. That is the exact meaning of this. Okay. So, we get this. This does not work. It means what? That is for every, hence for every n, for every n, the 1 by n neighborhood of C, that is V 1 by n C, contains a number, contains a number x delta, this number x delta or x n contains a number x delta that is x n uh, or we can say x n corresponding to this x n such that such that 0 less than mod x n minus c less than 1 by n and x n belongs to A, but mod of f x n minus L is greater than or equal to epsilon or not. That is the mean, is it not? So, there does not hold means for any there will exist epsilon or not neighborhood of L such that whatever the delta neighborhood of C we choose, there will exist one point x n whose image will not fall within the epsilon neighborhood of L. So, that is why this shows the sequence x n is not uh, this implies that f x n will not converge is it not. So, this implies that the sequence f x n will not converge to L, okay? but that contradiction that is x n uh, does not converge to L, but that contradiction because with this contradicts the assumption second because second assumption says that for every sequence x n n that converges to c such that for all n the sequence f n converges to l this we are assuming and we wanted to prove one. So, what we have we have um, instead of showing that one is two we are assuming two is two, but one is does not hold. So, one does not hold that leads the contradiction of the two therefore, our assumption is wrong. So, if two is two one will definitely ho will hold. So, definitely two implies one. So, therefore, 2 implies 1. So, this completes the proof. <laughs> okay. So, that is what uh, now just like in a sequence, we have a some criteria for the divergence of the sequence. In a similar way, here also we have a criteria for divergence of the limb that if the limit does not exist what is the criteria for it. Okay. So, let us see the divergence criteria. Let A be a non empty subset of R and let F is a mapping from A to R and let C be a and let C be a cluster point C a a cluster point of A. Point of A. Okay. Then the criteria says if L if L belongs to R then F does not have limit L at C if and only if if and only if there exist a sequence x n if and only if there exist a sequence x n in A 
there exists a sequence x n and a with x n different from c for all n belongs to that set of natural numbers such that the sequence so the sequence x n sequence x n converges converges to c, but the corresponding images, but the sequence of f x n means corresponding images f of x n the sequence of corresponding images does not converge does not converge to l. So, this is the criteria for the divergence a limit of the function f x when x tends to is not equal to l <coughs> it means this will exist. Okay. Now, let us see few example where the sequence the sequence of the function or the limit of the function does not exist, which are very interesting examples and used very uh, used frequently in further study. So, first is example. Uh, the limit of this obviously the limit uh, uh, limit x x tends to 0 signum of x does not exist does not exist it means what first the signum what is the signum of this signum function means it is basically sign of the function so, when x is positive the value will be 1, when x is 0 the sign of this we consider uh, just a 0 and when x is negative we put it to be minus 1. So, this is the signum function that is a function is obviously this is our uh, line. So, when this 0 when x is 0 the function is 1, x is uh, negative function is minus 1 and at the point 0 we take to be 0. The limit of this signum function when x approaches to 0 does not exist. So, when we approach from the left hand side or we approach from the right hand side limit will not come out to be the same. Okay. In fact, before this I should prove that whenever the limit of the function f x exists the limit will be unique that I will show just after this. So, here the limit will not unique let us see why. It means if I take a sequence x n which goes to 0, but the corresponding function sigma x n does not go to that 0. So, let us choose the sequence x n is minus 1 to the power n. Obviously, this sequence will go to 0 as n tends to infinity. What, what is the signum of this sequence x n? The signum of this sequence x n when n is obviously even it is positive, when n is odd it is negative and when uh, so with positive and even number it is a positive value plus 1, when n is negative it is a negative value okay. with 1 we want minus 1 plus 1. So, basically it is the same as this that is when n is even you are getting plus 1, when n is odd you are getting minus 1 and this will limit we, we get it. So, for all n belongs to n. Now, limit of this it does not exist because it varies when n tends to infinity it goes to 1 as well as minus 1 a when n sequence approach towards the even when n is odd. So, there are the terms of the sequence which goes to plus 1 or even minus 1 odd. So, near by this 0 interval there is a variation variation of 2 and variation of 2 it cannot be less than f sin l because we want this thing to be less than epsilon l. I choose epsilon l to be half, how the variation can be less than half when the variation is from minus 1 to plus 1 they are exactly 2. Okay. So, this limit does not exist therefore, similarly another example if I take suppose I take limit of this x tends to 0 sin of 1 by x does not exist does not exist in R. 
again sine function if I look the sine function the graph of the sine function is something like this this is 0 uh, it go plus 1 and minus 1 maximum so we can get this thing oh, sorry this is like this and something like this then coming from here and the similar linear but as soon as 0 it fluctuate very okay it fluctuates too much and basically you are getting this thing like this and so on like this something like this. means near by 0 it jumps keep on jumping going up down going up and down like this so we get the fluctuation and the friction is very thicky around the point 0. We are claiming this limit does not exist. It means along the two different path, if the limit of the sequence has different value and both the paths tending to 0, then obviously the limit will not exist. So, let us take the limit x n, choose x n to be 1 by n pi and suppose another sequence by n if I take 1 by pi by 2 plus 2 n pi. Now, both the things are tending to 0, this is also tending to 0, this is also tending to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, these sequences are converging towards 0 that is mod of x n minus 0 is less than delta. Now, for this sequence what is the f of x n? If I take f of x n, f x is sin 1 by x. So, what will be the f of x n? f of x n is 0 because when x n is 1 upon n pi the corresponding sin of n pi and sin integral multiple of pi is 0 while f of by n this is sin of 2 n pi plus pi by 2 that is always sin pi by 2. So, this will be 1. So, it means the at along one point it is 0 sequence along another point the limit of this is 1. So, it does not exist therefore, limit of this does not exist. exist. Okay. Uh, now, here uh, as I told that uh, we are assuming the limit is unique is it not limit cannot be today if the limit of the function exists it will be unique. So, let us prove that result is uh, and all these exercise which we have depends on this only. Okay. So, this we should prove it earlier, but however if f is a mapping from a to r a to r and if c is the crystal point of a and if c is the crystal point of a then f can have only only one limit at c. We cannot have the two limits. So, proof is again we will prove by contradiction suppose there are two limits. Okay. Then finally, we will see that these two limits are not different they are identical. So, let uh, the effects of this when x tends to c is suppose let this limit be l and l dash. Okay. L and l dash suppose this is so, limit of this f x is l when x tends to c, limit of f x when x tends to c is also l dash. Okay. So, apply the definition now. So, for a given epsilon l greater than 0, there exist at delta 1 depending on epsilon l such that if x belongs to a and 0 is less than mod x minus c less than delta then delta 1 then mod of f x minus l let it be epsilon l by 2 here okay. uh, delta 1 it depends on epsilon l by 2 suppose f x minus l is less than epsilon l by 2 okay. for all x this similarly here for the same epsilon l greater than 0 there exists a delta 2 which depends on epsilon l by 2 such that if x belongs to a and x lying between x minus c less than delta 2 okay, 
then then mod of fx minus l is less than l dash is less than epsilon y2 for all such okay now consider mod l minus l the consider delta to be the infimum of infimum of delta 1 and delta 2 so if i choose replace delta 1 by delta then this result will also hold if i choose delta 2 by delta again this result will hold so now consider 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 mod of l minus l dash now this is less than equal to add and subtract this so we can write fx minus l plus fx minus l dash but fx minus l is less than epsilon l so for all x belongs to a and 0 less than x minus c less than delta this is also less than epsilon l y 2 this is also less than that is this laser when this result is okay so what is shows that this implies l is equal to l because epsilon l is arbitrary arbitrary is small so we can get l equal to l that is the limit will be unique so if as functional value f x when x tends to c has a two different limit along the two different path which are approaching to c then the function will not have a limit at that point so that is what and then such a case we say it is a diverging uh, function diverges at x c ok that is ok <laughs> because diverge does not mean that function limit of this must go to infinity only it is also one of the criteria when the limit of the function f x when x tends to c is say infinity it means the function itself is not defined at infinity at the point ok and the limit is coming to be infinite so it is not finite but even if it is finite and different we having different value at a different along the different path still we say then we also we say the function f x does not have a limit at x equal to c so that is the criteria for this ok now uh, this we have discussed uh, now there are few more results uh, over the limits and that we have seen in parallel to this will be parallel to our the tholams as we have discussed in case of sequences okay so before that let us see the definition of the boundedness boundedness let a let a is a non empty subset of r and f and let f is a mapping from a to r a to r and let c be a cluster point be a cluster point of a be a cluster point of a c be a cluster point here we say f is bounded on a neighborhood on a neighborhood of c bounded on a neighborhood of c if there exist there exist and if bounded on a neighborhood if there exist a delta neighborhood of c that is b delta c delta neighborhood of c and a constant capital m greater than 0 such that such that mod of f x is less than or equal to m for all x belonging to a intersection v delta c v delta c if this is true then we say the function f x is a bounded function is bounded in the neighborhood of c bounded in the neighborhood of c ok if the function has a limit then it will always be bounded ok so the result is 
if A which is non empty subset of R and F is a mapping from A to R and let uh, has a limit at C has a limit at C belongs to R. Then the function f is bounded on some neighborhood of C. Some neighborhood of C is bounded on some neighborhood of C. Let us see the proof of this result. So, if the limit of the function f exists, then the function f must be bounded in some neighborhood of C. Okay. So, suppose f is the limit, let if l is the limit of f x when x tends to c, this is given. Okay. So, let us by definition, so for a given epsilon, I choose epsilon to be 1, for a given epsilon greater than 0, because it is already get 0, uh, there exists a delta, which will depend on epsilon positive, such that 0 if 0 is less than mod x minus c less than delta, then by definition mod of f x minus l is less than 1. Now, from here can you not say the mod of f x is less than mod l plus 1. Okay. So, I choose m to be, so here m can be chosen as mod l plus 1 then for all x in the neighborhood of this it is there. In case, in case if c also belongs to a, in case if c belongs to a, then what we do is we choose, we can take m to be the supremum value of mod f c and this bond and this bond. So, if I choose this, then all this function f x will satisfy this condition for all x in some neighborhood of C. That is intersection A. Okay. So, this will prove that. Okay, thank you very much. This is um, we will continue again for few more results on this sequence. Thank you.